let's just start with Jacoby and what you guys saw on him and how you kind of landed uh, on him to compete with him. Yeah, well, jo Jacoby was a guy that uh, we all had uh, consensus on, um, veteran guy who's been a starter in the league, played well last year, we thought. Um, so and I sat down and talked with him when he came in. It was really a really good visit. Very impressed with him as a young man. Heard a lot of good things about him, that who, who he is and who he add, what he adds to our locker room. Um, so we're excited about having him with us. Um, the guy's got an NFL arm. He can make every throw. Um, he's athletic. He can make people miss in space. He's not, you know, straight line fast, but he's got some uh, some pocket presence and has a really good feel for where the pressure's coming from and knows where to go with the football. Um, so we're excited about about having Jacoby with us. Yeah, just his, just the, his demeanor and his confidence. It, re it reminded me a little bit of uh, of uh, Taylor uh, from the standpoint of his ability to go out and, and perform his very best, and then you know, chips fall where, where 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 wherever the chips fall. You know, he wasn't necessarily viewing himself as a backup or as a starter. He's ready to come in and compete. It's your, your expectation that Jacoby and Sam Howell will be your top two quarterbacks going into camp? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So to that end, uh, despite signing Jacoby and what you guys have said about Sam Howell, there's just constant chirping out there about Lamar Jackson. And then, of course, today he reveals he's made a, a trade request. Uh, are, are the commanders in, interested in Lamar Jackson? Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to get in Lamar specifically, but I will talk about free agency in general. You know, so there's literally hundreds of guys that are that are, are free, and um, you know, we probably end up making serious contract offers, having serious discussions with somewhere between 10 and 20 of those guys each year. So there are a ton of talented players that um, that could help us that we don't end up talking to for various reasons, and Lamar falls into that category. Why, why, why does Lamar fall into that category, knowing the caliber of player he is? Yeah. Well, there, there are a ton of quality players. I mean, Javon Hargrave is an excellent, you know, really good defensive tackle. We're not talking to him. You know, so there, there are a number of reasons why we don't. I won't get into specifics about him. I don't want to sound critical of anyone. Um, he's, an, he's a very talented guy. He's one of the better quarterbacks in this league. Um, but for us right now, we're moving forward with Sam and with Jacoby. How serious was the discussion between you guys before deciding not to do that? Yeah, well, we talk about everybody, you know, and our, our pro department evaluates everybody. So, like I said, there are hundreds of, of players who are, who are actually free. Uh, we end up in our meetings having extensive, extensive discussions with a, you know, over probably, you know, 40 or 50 guys. And then we end up having contract negotiations with probably, like I said, 10 to 20 guys. So it's, this free agency period is no different than any other. There are a lot of talented players that we don't make offers to and that we don't have discussions with. And you guys were obviously very aggressive pursuing quarterbacks last year. Was, what changed? Was it more when you saw from Sam or the things that you learned last year that you applied to this strategy after this offseason? Uh, you know, I, I would say we've been very impressed with Sam Howell uh, from start to finish. I know, I know the fans and, and you guys saw one game. But we saw Sam throughout his college college career. Uh, we saw him from the time that we drafted him last April. Uh, we saw him in rookie minicamp, saw him in OTA, saw him in training camp, saw him practice the entire season, saw him go out and beat a playoff team in his first start. We feel very, very confident in Sam Howell. The idea that you could get a player like Sam possibly to start and be on the rookie contract, how enticing is that opportunity going forward? It is very enticing, and, and that's what a lot of teams have done and have been successful doing. It allows you to allocate resources to other areas on, on, on your roster. Um, you know, we've got some, uh, we have some other issues to take care of, you know. Um, we've got some other guys who, who are going to be free. We want to take care of, of our own players. So it really helps us in terms of being able to take care of the players on our roster right now who are going to be free agents and to be more aggressive in free agency going forward. Surprised that there's as much buzz with Lamar and you guys from the outside as there has been, at least in terms of the push of people wanting you to, to sign him. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure where that all comes from because from the very beginning, we've been pretty consistent with our message, uh, and it continues to come up. So um, nothing really surprises me as far as this kind of stuff in the league. It's coming from somewhere. It's not coming from us. What was your experience like? Uh, just Working with a player who didn't have you know, his own agent, like Jacoby, um, what is that like for you? Do you like it? Do you care? Like what? Yeah, well, there's some challenges there. I mean, I think frequently an agent can be a buffer where you can talk about the pluses and minuses without hurting somebody's feelings. Um, when you don't have that that uh, layer between you and the player, 
uh, it's a little bit more challenging, you know. Um, but I, I do understand why players do that. Um, Jacoby was very professional dealing with him. Um, I haven't spoken with Lamar, um, but um, I, I think it's it's a trend in the league now, and um, you know, it is it is what it is, really. I mean, we 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 deal with agents more frequently. It's a more natural process. Uh, but I totally understand why players do that. Did you ever consider it as a player? No, I didn't. No. With, with the way money is going to the quarterbacks, does that do you think more teams will maybe opt for a guy like Sam? You you know, there's, you still want to see more, but like over pursuing a guy who's just a lot more expensive because of what it does to the roster construction. Uh, you know, every team has their own formula. Everybody thinks about it differently. Uh, from our standpoint, when you have a guy like Sam who's shown us what he has shown us over the past year or so, um, we felt very comfortable moving forward with him. We'll give him every opportunity to win that job. Jacoby's ready to come in and perform and compete as well. And so we feel good about our quarterback situation. We bring in that Eric B. I mean, what, what's that process been like getting a team of guys that he likes? What's his input been? And, and what kind of player do you get the sense he, he wants you to have here? Yeah, he's brought a lot of energy, a lot of passion, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, knows kind of what he's looking for. Uh, he's been a strong advocate for some, 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 some of our free agents, um, and so he's been very involved in that process. And uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with him. Is there a style he you could you would describe his, his kind of guy as? Um, you know, um, we, we probably have only talked about, you know, maybe a dozen players, so it's hard for me to define that right now. Um, but he felt very strong about Andrew Wiley, and he was very vocal about that and, and very honest about it. And you appreciate that kind of input uh, when you start making those kinds of, of uh, decisions. You know, So I, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with Eric. You guys still have some time before you have to pick up Chase Young's fifth-year option, but where do things stand with that process? And we're still talking about that. You know, We have a number of things to work through. Uh, we're getting through the first part of free agency right now. We're still in draft preparations. We have until May uh, to make that that. that that decision, and, and and we'll you know we'll we'll make the appropriate decision, appropriate decision at the right time. That you uh, signed Duran since we uh, last spoke. Does that complicate the Chase situation? Knowing you already paid two linemen as much money as you have with John and Duran, does that complicate possibly picking up that? Option? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, you, you, it's it's all about players. It's all about quality players. It's about that, that, and that's the way you win football games. So you know, we had no problem. Uh, you know, putting that amount of money into two two defensive the defensive tackles, and we have no problem moving forward with defensive ends if we need to. Yeah. Do, you, do you still see Sam Howell as QB one after bringing in for set, or is it completely open now? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Sam will have every opportunity to win that job. Jacoby's ready to come in and compete, and we'll see where it, where it chips fall. Do you feel like you have the players in place to protect Sam well? Um, you know, that's. that's I, I think where we are right now, offensive line wise, we've made some, we've added some quality players. Um, we have the ability to field a quality offensive line now. Our depth is not great, um, and it's something that we will continue to uh, try to look at. Um, but I'm excited about what Andrew brings to the table, and uh, and, and uh, Nick, um, and Trent. How do you feel about the uh, tight end? Very good, very good. We got a good group of young players there. Uh, they all have a bunch of upside. Um, you know, um, we've we've got a really good group of tight ends, I think, and I think Juan's done a great job working with that group and developing that entire group, so um, I'm excited about that. What's really your priority? When you're looking at cornerbacks, what is sort of your priority? Is it you know, certain physical traits, mental thing? What do you focus on most? Yeah, um, you know what I like in corners, and I'm probably a little bit different than a lot of people. I like to see the competitiveness, and I like to see guys that don't want to get a single ball caught on them. Um, you need to be athletic. You need to, have, you need to be able to run. You need to be able to get out of breaks and have body control. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, you've you got to have the athletic skills to play that spot, but I really look for the competitiveness. In the defensive backs you've drafted, there's been, like, I think a pretty uh, like a physical profile. They've been, like, 5'9 to 6 foot, 200 pounds or lighter, 4'5 or faster. Is that a coincidence, or is there something about that profile that you like specifically? No, I, I think we I think we look for guys that, uh, depending on what scheme the, the, the we end up playing. We look for guys that fit into that scheme. Everywhere I've been, um, with speed has been a big issue. Um, places that I've been, uh, where we are now, we play a ton of zone, um, so it's not as big of an issue. Uh, but you do like to have guys with enough size to be dur durable. Uh, you like to have enough speed, and uh, you know, man coverability is very important on third downs, I think. Looking at the cap right now, there's not a lot of space. Is do you have more moves coming? Are you guys comfortable? I mean, you talked about maybe more depth for the O-line, but it's kind of upside down at this point. 
Yeah, that's not a problem. I mean, the, the cap is what it is. We have a plan for that. Um, the moves that, that we're able to make to create room, um, and it's not going to be a concern at all. Can I ask you about the safety position? How's that kind of evolved, and do you place more importance on that position than maybe you did you know, years earlier? Yeah, like I said before, um, you know, uh, with the way offenses are spreading defenses out, uh, it's important to have safeties that can cover. There are no more box safeties anymore. Uh, those box safeties now become hybrid linebackers and buffalo nickel type of players. Uh, so it's important to have safeties that have range and that can cover. Um, and so I, I think that's sort of and, and something that's evolved in the league uh, for a while now. Um, and most of our guys kind of fit that profile. Ron's, Ron's talked about being asked about the sale process by coaches, free agents, et cetera. How important was it to get the <coughs> Honestly, the sale process has had zero effect on anything that we have done. Our ownership has been very supportive of the guys that that uh, that, uh, that that we have signed in, in our free agency, and um, there's it's been zero impact on any of that. Um, it's all about putting a good football team together for 2023, and that's where our focus is. I'm not involved in that. Don't know much about it. Is it is it hard in your job? Is it easy or hard to stay? away from that information, just kind of keep your head down and do what you got to do? No, not for me. I mean, things that are not in my control, I really don't get involved in. Um, you know, going back to even, I talked to you earlier about the branding. When we were going through the branding, I just didn't want to know what the name was. That way I can look you in the face and say, I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't know what's going on with the sale. And I'm glad to be able to say that. Well, you guys effectively swapped out uh, Barton for Holcomb. I guess just what was that? Was Barton? Did you just like him automatically? And kind of decided to move on from Cole, or was it a negotiation with Cole that led you the other way? Yeah, you know, um, Cole did a great job for us. Really appreciate him, um, and um, hopefully he does a great job for uh, Pittsburgh. Now we're happy to have Cody. Cody, we see as kind of a, an ascending player. Last year was his first really big year in terms of production: 136 tackles. He had two interceptions. Um, and he, you know, he, he, he was a green dot guy. You know, he was making the calls. We think he's an ascending guy. I think he has a lot of upside, and we're looking forward to working with him. What did you see from him that made you think he was an ascending guy? Yeah, just that last year was a huge year for him. He had 136 tackles, like I said. Previous, prior to that, he was more of a special teams guy. But uh, we think he's, he's ready to step his game up, and he showed that last year. Um, and we're excited about the opportunity to work with him. Just continuing to grow, continuing to grow in our scheme, continuing to understand our scheme better. Um, when he plays fast, man, he's pretty special, you know, and we want him playing fast all the time. So, um, he, Damon is going the right direction. He's in a good spot now. He had a good year last year, um, and we're excited about what uh, about seeing him play this year. How much would you guys like to get a stretching time for guys like Cam Curl, um, Montez? Yeah, I mean those guys are really important to us. They both are, they both played great for us last year, um, and we're talking through all that now uh, about next moves. We, like I said, we got to the first wave of free agency, and we'll start to focus now on how we move forward going into into 2023. You guys have talked a bit about the center position, trying to stabilize that. Is your plan to have Chase really come back and start there? Yeah, I can't really speak to that right now. I mean, I, I think uh, you know we've we've talked with Chase. He's on our roster. Um, we'll kind of see where it goes. Uh, but what we did in free agency, I think, gives us flexibility. Uh, you're talking about with Nick Gates. He's the guy who's played all three interior positions, and he played right tackle. Uh, with Wiley, um, he's played both guard spots, and he's played right tackle. Um, and with Trent, uh, he's played pretty much everywhere, you know, uh, except, except for center. So uh, we have flexibility now moving forward, and it's up to the coaches to put those pieces together. And you got I was just the running back from adding to that. How much of that? How much of it is a priority? Well, you know, obviously, JD um, losing him is is a really big loss. We certainly appreciate everything that he, that he was able to do for us. Um, we're excited about Brian. Um, excited about Antonio, um, and you know, um, you know, our other backups. We think are solid players as well. But we'll be looking across the board to get better. You know, so I, you know, we'll, we'll address that if we need to. You got a young quarterback. I don't think you were here yet, but a few years ago, Ron had Dwayne and wanted to develop him, and then the division was winnable, and he felt he had to make a change. How do you balance a young quarterback that needs development with 52 other guys trying to win games, and, and 
can't suffer through the ups and downs. Yeah, well, again, we feel very confident about Sam. Um, you know, he, he was there the entire season. Uh, he prepared every week like he was going to play. Um, he practiced very well throughout the season. I don't think he's as far away as a developmental sort of player. You know, he did go out and beat a playoff team in his first start. Um, so I don't view him as a developmental player. Now, he'll be, if he ends up starting, it'll be his first year starting. There'll be some bumps in the road. But um, I wouldn't call him developmental. In hindsight, do you wish he had maybe gotten more playing time last year? I think that's no. I, I'm I'm happy with with, with with exactly where he is. Um, like I mentioned to you before, there's been a number of guys who have gone on to have very good careers who've not played much as as uh, rookies, and I think he falls into that. I think he will fall into that category. So um, I think one of the problems that the league has in terms of developing quarterbacks is playing those guys too much too soon. Um, so I, I think he played the appropriate amount last year, and I'm excited about what he's going what, what he's going to be able to do this year. You, you mentioned uh, seeing behind the scenes, I guess, last year, him yeah. growing and then feeling good. Anything you can share with us where you felt like, oh man, you know, that, that's a guy we got to keep our eye on. With Sam? Yeah. Well, I felt that way from the very beginning. I was at uh, Deami's pro day, and uh, and Sam threw um, when he was going into his senior year, and it was a very impressive uh, day. You, you would have thought he was one of the guys coming out. Um, and uh, so I've always been impressed with Sam going back to when he was at North Carolina. And, um, and there's a quiet confidence that he has. Um, and um, I, think he, I think he fits in well in terms of the locker room with the guys. The guys trust him. They respect him. He works his butt off. He's very smart. Like I said, he can make every, every throw that, that, that uh, there is. And um, the guy's very, very talented. He's, he's, he's going to be a good player, I believe. Back to the more to the salary cap, you guys haven't restructured a lot of contracts or it's just, it's just under it, under Ron. Is that something that's a guiding principle? We don't you, you have a gap and play that, or because obviously we do see some other teams do that for in, in different ways. Yeah, I mean, from our standpoint, I don't think we we have needed to do that a lot uh, in the past, and uh, you know we we pretty much try to stay, stay cash to cap, uh, so we don't have we don't have a lot of borrowing that we're doing from future years. We haven't done that in the past, so um, I think the way that we've that we've managed the cap has been pretty responsible, and we'll continue to do that. When you're evaluating prospects, do you think that uh, experience in terms of snaps in college will be as important to you this year as it was last year? Yeah, it's always important to me. It's always important to me. Um, you want to see guys that have been in different situations and guys that have uh, had the opportunity to go out, uh, whether you know if, if they're playing you know uh, from behind, if they're quarterbacks or whatever, or playing ahead. Uh, you know, if they're defensive players, guys that have had experience on the field bring a lot more to the table. When they don't have the experience, they're going to have to get it with you. And when they get it with you, they're making mistakes as they're learning. So I'd like to see guys that have good play history in college. Last one. I have a general interest question. Anybody say anything specific? I'm just curious with these college guys, with the NIL and the transferring and guys who play on two, three teams, how does that impact your evaluation? Does it make it your job harder when you're seeing guys in three schemes? Is that beneficial to you? Yeah. What do you make of that? Trend? Yeah, um, I, I think it's it's obviously very different. You know, guys are getting paid. It's, there'll be some guys probably taking pay cuts coming to play for us now. You know, this year, so it's very different. Um, but I I do think this. I think if there's a benefit from it, you don't see that seventh round pick coming out or that free agent coming out. If they don't like how things are going for them at the school, they can transfer somewhere else. Uh, if they need money for their family or whatever, they can get nil money. So uh, the benefit of it is you guys are able to stay in school and continue to play football and work toward their uh, degree. So I think that's, that's the positive of it, and the rest of it we have to adjust to.